Hello, everybody. Oh. Oh. Recordings in progress. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Michaels Community Classroom here this evening. We are glad to be back for another Monday night paint night. Um, I've been off for the last couple of weeks not doing this, so I'm glad to be back. And I'm glad to be here with Chris tonight because it is a special treat to learn from Chris Williams. She is an amazing painter and an amazing teacher. So we've got a fun uh, Santa painting that she's gonna be doing tonight, getting us in the holiday spirit. Um, one of the things that you will um, quickly learn is that there is a pattern that was, that was a part of the supply list. So I hope that you all have that. If you don't, we will put the link in there to get the pattern, but Again, if you don't have it, or if you, the template, I guess really is the word. Um, if you don't have it, or if you just find that the pace is going a little bit quickly, as always, we all know by now that these classes are recorded and you can go back and watch on your own time and um, paint at the pace that you would like and pause and you know all of those fun things. So um, with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you, Chris. Well, thank you, John, and thank you too also to Lindsay for uh, opening up our Zoom class this evening. As uh, John introduced me, I am Chris Williams, and I am here to have a great time with you this evening. So many of you uh, know me from our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group here where I, we teach um, every week all kinds of fun and interesting things, and I've also taught several times in the Michaels Community Classroom too. So I just want to have fun with you all this evening. And as John said, if the pace is too fast, or perhaps for our East Coast friends, if starting a painting at eight o'clock in the evening is too much for you, just sit back, relax, uh, type in your questions in the chat. We'll see if we can try and answer them for you. And this class, as always with the Michaels Community Classroom classes are posted on or this one will be posted, I should say, within 24 hours on the Michaels YouTube channel. So you'll have it to replay and paint along um, later. So I just wanna share with you, this is our painting that we are going to do this evening. This is Santa, uh, our jolly old elf. And um, for those of you that are interested, Everyone always says, well, what about Mrs. Claus? Well, we've got some women power going on and I'm gonna also be teaching the pair to Santa and Mrs. Claus is going to be taught this Thursday in our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group that will be December the 2nd at noon Eastern Standard Time uh, in our regular lunch and learn scheduled time. So if you want to paint the pair, paint Santa with me tonight and we will be painting Mrs. Claus this Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time in the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. So you too can um, enjoy both Santa and Mrs. Claus. So um, part of your supply list tonight was the four by 12 stretched canvas. And as John mentioned, there is a pattern. I just wanna real quickly go through the instructions of using the template or the pattern. And if we can go overhead right now, I think that would be awesome. I just want to share with you, I prepared myself a little bit ahead tonight just to kind of get a sneak peek and a preview to show you what yours will look like. Once you download that pattern and print it out, I usually, because the pattern is going to be in two pieces, uh, because this did not completely fit on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So you're going to get the top half of Santa in one uh, paper and the bottom half of our project in the second one. So rather than trying to deal with two pieces of paper, I tend to draw everything out and use tracing paper first so that you'll have one sheet as your pattern. And then to transfer that onto your canvas, and this is just a four by 12 artist canvas, you're going to center your project um, underneath the pattern or put the pattern directly on top and kind of center it. I use a artist tool called a stylist. This happens to be a double ended one with a small ball and a uh, larger ball tip. And then you're going to use artist carbon paper, which is called transfer paper. It's also referred to as graphite paper. And when you use your graphite paper, mine's a very well loved, very well used one, as you can see here by several times I have traced and transferred my pattern. There is a dark side and a matte or frosted side. You're gonna put the business side down on your canvas and that's the dark side. So once you have your pattern in place, you can even tape it in place using some painter's tape. 
you're going to lift up one edge and with that dark side of the transfer paper to the canvas, you're gonna sandwich it in between the, the template, the pattern and your canvas. And then use the transfer tool of an artist stylist. You can also use a dead ballpoint pen. And you just then going to trace over these pattern lines to transfer the pattern directly onto the canvas. And that's what I did for mine tonight. And many of you have written me through the course of the day today here at Plaid and told me that you've already got your patterns on and ready to go. And if you do, that's perfect. If you don't, or jo as John was saying, if you weren't aware that there was a template for tonight's class, just simply enjoy the class, watch and follow along, download your pattern, and then transfer it onto your canvas, just as I did here. And mine is fairly light, but I'm going to hold it up so that you can see. After I transferred mine, I even went over it a little bit with pencil just so it would show up a little bit more. You don't want to have really dark, severe lines, but just transfer enough so that you can see the pattern. All right, let's go ahead and get started, okay? So I'm going to keep Santa here next to me so that you'll be able to see what I'm painting tonight and what I have previously painted. And that way you can kind of see where I'm heading. When I paint a Santa Claus, one of the first things I like to do is to paint the face. Um, I always feel like there's a friend in the, in the studio with me when I am uh, painting along. So let's go ahead and get our flesh on Santa's face. On the supply list, I said you could use a color and I'm using the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paints. Multi-Surface is perfect for so many different types of surfaces. It works on artist canvas, wood, uh, terracotta, glass, glazed ceramics, fabric, uh, paper mache, so many different types of surfaces, including wood and metal too. I'm using a canvas tonight and the multi-surface is a beautiful paint that Plaid makes. It uh, is very, very rich and creamy in consistency. And it also, besides working on so many different surfaces is great to use because there's a sealer built in this paint and you don't have to worry about, um, oh, varnishing afterwards or finishing afterwards. With that sealer in, um, in the paint, it dries beautifully to a gorgeous satin finish. And while I've been telling you about the color or telling you about the paint, I wanna tell you that we're gonna make that flesh color first. This first color that I put onto the palette is a color called Cool Bisque, which is a beautiful creamy color that could be used as a skin tone. But I'm also gonna teach you how to make a skin tone if you do not have the Cool Bisque. And what I added to my palette is some wicker white and some yellow ochre. And I'm also gonna add out some apple red. And one I noticed when I grabbed my paints this evening, this one still has the plastic wrap. Can you see the shrink wrap on the label there? I'm gonna show you, <coughs> excuse me, an easy way to remove these. In class, I often see people with an X-Acto knife cutting or they're, or they're taking it up to their mouth and using their teeth to try and remove that plastic wrap. You have that tool right here in your hand. I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna hold my left hand, just circling around that lid and I'm gonna remove it and twist that bottle and pull it off. And that's as easy as it is. There's no need to get a sharp implement out. You can just, Re easily remove that shrink wrap just by twisting up, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some, and we're gonna mix a flesh color. So I'm gonna add some white off to the side here. I'm gonna start with a little bit of yellow ochre and we're gonna make a creamy color. I added maybe a little bit too much yellow ochre, so I'm gonna add a little bit more white. And this is just showing you that you can mix a flesh color even if you don't have that cool bisque in your, stash, or in your stash of paints. Now what I'm going to do is add just a little bit more white. We want it a little bit creamier. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of apple red, a little at a time, just to kind of pink it up and we're gonna get a skin tone. So you can either mix your colors if you'd like, or you can use the Cool Bisque if you have it already. So this is a very easy way to make a flesh color or a skin tone color. I'm gonna take a little bit of this up here and put it next to the one. You can see how very close they are in color. If I put smash that down, you can see. Now you can adjust this a little bit if you wanted, if you wanted a little bit pinkier skin, 
If you wanted a little bit um, browner skin, you can add a little bit brown tone to it, but that makes a very nice flesh color. So once you either use the cool bisque or you use the color that you've mixed up, you can go ahead and load a small flat brush. Mine right now is a number six. And we're going to go ahead and just simply paint in and almost like your color book painting or base coating in the shape of that flesh area. And um, just kind of go right up along the curve of his fur on his hat, all the way down to the uh, cheek area. I paint around that little ball nose and just kind of fill in the, what you see as the face of our Santa. We're gonna let that dry. But before we do, we do want to put, I'm using just the corner tip of my brush. I turned my brush up on its corner and I'm going to use just that little bit of the edge of that corner of the brush to kind of paint in that little circle of his nose. That's all I'm going to do right now. And before I uh, clean my brush, I'm just going to wipe the flesh color off. We're going to go ahead and get the red on our Santa outfit. And I'm stroking into the puddle of paint as I load my brush. You'll notice I didn't go right into the middle and scoop up a dollop of it. What we're going to do is we're going to paint all of his hat with his little long tail here and all of his um, outfit or his uh, uh, clothing. So I'm just going to start uh, when I'm right handed. So a good tip is to always start on the left side, working to the right side. If I started painting here on the right side, as I moved to the left of my canvas, I could very well get this part of my palm of my hand or my fingers into this wet paint. So I'm gonna start on the left side and I'm using the chisel edge of that brush to kind of draw a line and then paint in this like back arm that is behind him here. Use as many uh, strokes as you can, but I prefer to paint with long smooth strokes when I am painting in areas. You'll find if you use a larger brush, it's much easier to paint as well. If you use a smaller flat brush, you'll notice that you might have to paint more strokes than if you were to paint a long smooth stroke with a bigger brush. So there's another little tip for you. If those of you that are beginners, um, I'm gonna keep talking as though we have some beginners in the class because I think some of these helpful hints are always great to know. I'm just going ahead and painting around the hat right now and just covering the bottom like skirt, if you will, of his jacket or his coat. How many of you did some cyber shopping today? I hope you all did cyber Monday shopping. I hope you enjoyed shopping both at Michael's and at Plaid Online. We all had some bargains. I'm sure Michael's had fabulous bargain sales today. And if you haven't shopped cyber Monday yet, it's not over. It's not over till midnight tonight. True. <laughs> 40% off flash sale applied online. There you go, John. Yeah, so there's lots of bargains to be had. And you know what? As a crafter or an artist or even a beginning student, there's always paint that you want or always new brushes you want to try out. So take advantage of those sales. And we're going to just keep painting in long, what smooth size, strokes. What oh, size sorry, are you using? using a number six, John, or a number eight. Okay. And you're just gonna continue painting the whole little bottom part of his jacket. And if you've passed me already and you've got yours done, just keep painting the whole red coat of Santa here. Once we paint the whole coat, then we can move on to paint his hat too. And I thought this Santa was kind of fun because of the long skinny tail that he's got on his hat, almost like a long stocking hat. I'm gonna go ahead and... And you know, one thing you'll see if you're just kind of following and watching along, I love to turn my work so that it's most comfortable to me. So do feel free to turn your work as you are holding it and applying this base color. <clears throat> If you uh, have a hair dryer nearby, you might want to grab that too because you may want to 
speed up the process a little bit tonight by we will dry after we get this part painted. I have a hair dryer here right next to me. And as I continue to paint here and get my red on here, I think I will go ahead and speed up the drying time for me as well. There is a belt in the center between the top and bottom of his jacket. And we are gonna leave that free of paint for now. If by chance you accidentally covered over some, not to worry, his black is gonna be painted black. So we will be able to cover over the red if by chance you didn't see the belt. And if you have any questions, do holler them out in the chat section. John is here with us this evening and he'll be glad to pass along any comments or questions to me. Yeah. This color, so, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say, um, if you're just joining, um, and you missed the very first part, there is a little process for getting the, uh, for getting the tracing on the canvas. And essentially you're just putting the um, tracing paper down or the transfer paper down, putting your, your uh, pattern on top and then using a stylus or a, um, you know, the end of a ballpoint pen or something like that to just transfer it onto your canvas. So for those of you who just joined late and didn't see that part, that's how she did it. And the, um, pattern itself was included in the supply list. So, yeah. and, um, and Lindsay also put a link uh, in, in the chat for it if you need it. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. You can buy transfer and paper at Michael's and any number of uh, stores, I would suppose. Right, Yes, Chris? that's so true. And you, the other thing too is if you are joining us a few moments late and by chance missed that part of the instruction, remember too that this video is going to be posted on the Michaels um, YouTube channel. And so therefore you'll be able to see how I transferred it on the replay. Sure. And um, Chris, if, they do, if, if someone weren't able to get this uh, little four by 12 canvas, uh, I suppose they could just paint on a regular square canvas and then extend out the, the borders or how would they do that? Uh, sure, they sure could. They could even just paint it on, um, I did this on a canvas, but gosh, this would be cute even on a greeting card, you know, uh, like a legal size that's turned sideways or something. That would be really fun. Um, on, a, on a wooden plaque would be another great thing to paint it on. There so, you go. That's a good, yeah. that's a few good ideas. And then let, people are all full of, uh, full of questions here while we're, while we're catching up on painting in the in the Santa's robe here. Um, what about the black uh, frame? Where did you get that? Well, I'm sure Michaels carries many, many wonderful frames in their framing department. Um, I happen to get mine very conveniently online um, with a source that I often use for frames. Um, but I would suggest checking Michaels uh, framing department. There you go. Yeah. Good idea. I'm gonna hit my hair dryer real quick, but keep the questions coming if anyone's got anything. Okay. I think the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna base in his beard area. And I say beard because we're not going to do the mustache, just the beard. And then we're also gonna do the little curly part of his hat. And so what I did just now is I added a little bit of black and that would be licorice out onto my palette. And I'm gonna take just a tiny little bit of that licorice and mix it in with some of the wicker white. I had very little left on my palette. And I think I might add a little bit more wicker white because I need to make up more paint than I have here. Now your gray, that is gonna be the undercoat for his mustache and the curly part of his hat is gonna be like a medium gray color. You don't want it too light. So just find a medium color gray that you like, almost like a charcoal medium gray. And that's just simply by mixing with your palette knife, a little bit of white and a little bit of the black. So that is pure white or wicker white. And then black could be pure black or it could be licorice. I put licorice on the palette 
uh, knife and on the supply list. So whichever black and white you have, I'm gonna now use the same brush that I was using and that's a, a medium size flat brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint, not the mustache area, like I said, we're gonna paint just the beard. And I'm gonna not worry too much about that individual little strokes of his uh, beard. We're gonna just kind of wispy that black and white mixture, that medium gray mixture onto the beard. This part's not really gonna show, but this is gonna help with the shading of the beard. And I'm just gonna kind of make some little loopy loops and kind of wisp that gray color on, painting just the beard area with a little bit of that medium gray mixture and get that on there real quick. Don't forget there's just a little bit area on the side here. If you get some into the mustache, not to worry at all, because we will cover that up when we get to painting the mustache. I'm also gonna work with that mixture of the black and white, that medium gray, to create the uh, little fluff on the cuff of his hat. And that is not just straight. You can see when from the design here, it's kind of like a, almost like little circular puffy cloud shapes. So we're just gonna get the gray mix on that. And while we have this gray mix, I'm also gonna do his boots. Now his boots end up being mostly black, but we're gonna start with the gray base. So just follow along the bottom of the skirt of his robe. And we're gonna paint in both of those boot shapes all the way down to the bottom of his shoe here. Just quickly getting the color on the canvas. He'll start coming to life once we can start adding the shading to him. And my canvas was not base coated ahead of time because in our time restraints tonight, we really don't have a lot of time to base coat and then transfer and then do all this undercoating and then the shading or the highlighting on top. So if I were doing this at home, you might be saying, why did she not base coat it white first? Well, you most definitely can. And for those of you that are just watching tonight and would rather follow along later, you can do that. You can go ahead and base coat your canvas white, let it dry, then transfer the design and then begin painting. Chris, um, yes. let's, let's just give people a, a minute to catch up. And while you're doing that, can you hold up your, hold it up close to the camera just for a minute? Some okay. folks are asking to, to see it. Oops. Yeah, there we go. So. So we have a rough coat or undercoat of the red on the entire robe minus the belt and the belt loop or uh, buckle minus the little jingle bell of his hat and also red that's apple red again is all down his hat with that long stocking uh cap type uh, tip to it and then the gray which was a mixture of wicker white and our black which in my case is licorice and that was made into a medium value gray that was painted on the beard area, just kind of little wispy loose ends here at the bottom. And then also kind of like little poofy cloud like shapes to create this part of his cap here. And then that same gray was used to paint the black of his shoes. Maybe I should hold it up because it looks like closed captioning is covering some of that. There we go. So, what we can do now, how are we doing, John? Is and I, I'm watching the clock here, so I just want to keep yeah, moving. Yeah, no, it's okay. If we have to keep going, let's 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 do that. Okay, okay. I don't want to leave anyone behind, but it, I know we only have well, an hour together too. It may be it may be that folks are going to have to catch up on the recording because it is kind of a fast pace. But what are you going to do? There's a lot to lot to cover here. Okay, so I'm adding two colors out onto my palette right now. I'm adding the color Pueblo, which is a beautiful like terracotta color. It's not quite a brown and it's not really an orange. It's kind of a nice mixture between browns and oranges. 
And then I also added a very hot pink color and that's called magenta out onto the palette. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at his face here. And as I hold my sample up, I can show you that we are going to, on the flesh itself, up underneath his cap here, we are going to use just a little bit of Pueblo to kind of create some shadow or shading on his forehead. The hot pink color that we just put out, magenta, is what we're gonna use for his cheeks. So that's what we're gonna work towards next. So what I like to do is I'm gonna clean my brush out from that gray that we last used. I don't want any gray on his flesh. I'm using, again, a flat brush. And this is uh, probably a number eight. You could also use, this is a number eight. You could also use a number six if you're more comfortable with a smaller brush. Just don't go too, too little. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load my brush on both sides. I'm stroking into the puddle here of my flesh color. So whether I, you're using the cool bisque or if you made a flesh color with white, yellow ochre and apple red, you want to load both sides of that flat brush with that skin color. And now what I'm gonna do is take just a light pressure and I'm going to tip just a little bit into that terracotta-like color, which is called Pueblo. And I'm going to then stroke on my palette. I'm kind of working that terracotta into that brush, not all the way across the flat of the brush, but you'll see it's just on one edge of that or one side, if you will, of that flat brush. So I've got the flesh mixture. I used the Pueblo on a little bit of a corner. I then shaded and blended well on my wax paper palette. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna turn my project so that it's on its side and the side of my brush that has the darker color to it, that would be the Pueblo, is what's gonna be right up next to the gray of his cuff on his hat. And I'm just going to pat, 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 and blend that color across what would be his forehead. And can you see now that it's darkened and shaded that just a little bit? If you want to go a little bit darker, you can. Just be careful not to overdo it. You don't want too, too dark of a forehead. This is just giving you a little bit of a shadow. I'll do it one more time for you. This is just giving you a little bit of a shadow on the forehead because the poofy part of his cap here, this fluffy fur part is over extending his face and it's giving you a little bit of a shadow. Can you all see what I just did? I'll turn him right side up. So that's your next step. And then don't wash your brush, just kind of wipe it onto a paper towel. And what we're gonna do is work on our cheeks next. Our Santa has been out in the cold, he's been feeding the reindeer, walking the property, and he's a little bit chilly and he has beautiful rosy cheeks. So we're gonna give him beautiful rosy cheeks next. I'm gonna load that same flat brush after I wiped away the rest of the Pueblo. How we're gonna do the skin tone load again. So load up with your flesh color, and then we're gonna tip again, just tip a little bit into that uh, beautiful rosy pink color. It's almost a hot pink and that's magenta. And with that magenta color, you can see again, I'm doing the same kind of thing to where I'm blending on my palette and I'm just gonna have a little bit of that pink on one side, some of the flesh color on the other side. And we're going to shade or blush his cheeks. We're not gonna do like little rosy cheeks where you see the color Sometimes I see people do like a little ball circle and the pink is to the top part. We're not going to do that. You'll notice that the pink is here at the bottom of his face and close to that mustache area. So hold your brush so that the magenta is close to this. Like think of this as being like a inverted L and over here, it's like an L. You're coming down the side of his face and across the top of his mustache. I hope that makes sense to everyone. So what we're gonna do with that magenta side of the brush, like I said, on the bottom of the face, up next to his um, mustache and kind of going up the side of his face, we're gonna add just one little bit. And again, I'm just kind of patting that color on. So you can load it up again. I wanna add just a little bit more pink on mine. You can even let it dry and then come back and add more. Do a second blush if you want to have really, really rosy cheeks for our Santa. 
Maybe your Santa's been outside working longer than mine here. So I'm gonna do the same thing, reversing it for the other side of his cheek. And that brush is just kind of pat, pat, patting along. All right. Now on his nose, we're going to highlight the top of his nose and we're going to give a little bit of a rosy blush on the bottom. And that nose is just simply a little circle there. So while you have your brush loaded, I, I washed mine out before I loaded it. Let me reload mine. While you have your brush loaded, keep that magenta side of the brush to the bottom of that little circle. And we're only gonna do something like that. Can you all see? It's just the pink on the bottom of that little circle. And like I said, if you want rosier cheeks, add a little bit more magenta. All right, now I'm gonna wipe that out because I do want to come back and put a little bit of a white highlight. So I'm gonna load my flesh again. This time I'm gonna tip into the wicker white and put just white on one tip. And on that little circle of his nose, we're gonna put a little bit of white on the top of that circle. And I'll show you here on my finished sample so you can see up close. So we've got the pink to the bottom of the circle and we have a white to the top. Oh my gosh, Liz, you just made my night. I just happened to see Liz's comment. Thank you so very much. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move on. We're gonna let the rest of his face dry before we go ahead and give him his eyes. Let's start working on the red um, that we need to get this shaded before we can do our beard and everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wipe my brush to remove the excess paint. Remember the red of his robe and the red of his hat was base coated in kind of roughly with our apple red. What we're going to do is we're gonna use apple red again. So we're gonna load our brush, both sides stroking into the puddle of paint flip the brush over and load it again with apple red. We're going to use a burgundy color to shade around the, um, the top of his cape or his coat, I should say, underneath the beard. So this little area right here, we're gonna shade there. We're gonna shade on the top of the belt and the bottom of the belt. And then we'll do a little detail shading around this hat too. So when I say burgundy, you, you're looking at your supply list and you're thinking, she didn't give us a burgundy. Well, we're gonna make a burgundy. So I'm gonna squeeze out just another small little puddle of my apple red. You can brush mix this and go along with a brush mix, but it, you might find it easier if you just go ahead and make up a little pile of burgundy. So I've got apple red here. I just used my palette knife with just tipped into the black color that I have here, which is licorice. Mm -hmm and I'm going to make a burgundy by mixing black with our red. You can make so many different shades or values mm. of burgundy using all kinds of colors, but we have black and red here. So let's go ahead and make the burgundy and see how easily that was to make a real rich, deep burgundy color. So we're gonna use this color to shade all of these areas on his hat and his robe. And so I, <coughs> excuse me, Loaded my brush good and full with the apple red. Now I'm gonna stroke up into this puddle of the burgundy color. And so I'm gonna put this burgundy color on one flat side of the brush and we'll have the apple red on the other side. Can you all see that on my palette here? So let's go ahead and start with this area underneath and around where his beard is going to fall onto his robe here. So I'm going to, with the burgundy side of my brush, I probably need to do it this way because of the closed captioning, sorry. With the burgundy side of my brush, I'm going to pat, pat, pat that color on all the way around that beard. And can you see what a difference that has made already in giving us a little bit of a shadow around that beard? So again, it's apple red on one side of the brush. It's our burgundy mixture on the other side of the brush. And that burgundy mixture was simply our red and our black. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing with the apple red and our burgundy mixture. And we're gonna shade along the top of the belt, around the buckle, and uh, continuing around the other half of the belt. 
And it's simply just a matter of pat, pat, patting that color on. And kind of like our cheeks, if you did it one application, you didn't feel like you got it dark enough to suit you, let this dry and you can come back and add another layer or another coat of that burgundy around. When you look at mine here versus my finished one, my finished one might be slightly darker, but each one's gonna be a little different. No two paintings are ever gonna be the same. All right, I'm gonna continue with my shading. And I am again, just patting that color on. I'm on the bottom section of his robe underneath the belt. And then remember to go around that buckle and coming right up to where his hat is. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start shading on the robe right up along the area where the stocking cap part of his hat comes down, the little tail of his hat, if you will. And we're going to keep that burgundy color up on the robe part, right up next to the hat. And you're going to maybe start at the belt like I did and kind of tap, 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 pat, 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 the color coming down that little section, go around the little ball that we have left open. That's going to be his jingle bell at the bottom. And this one, don't worry about the jingle bell being a perfect circle because that is going to be painted in yet. This is all simply just pat, pat, patting the color on. Very, very simply done. And we're going to continue on the top part from uh, the belt all the way up to where the beard is. following the line of that stocking cap, the tail, I should say, maybe that's a good way to call it, the tail of his hat. Then what we're going to do on the top of his hat, where that fur meets the red fabric part, we're gonna shade on that area. Don't worry about the rest of it, that will be a highlight. So I've got the shading now around the beard, above the belt, below the belt and around the hat on the bottom part and on the hat going up to his beard. I also shaded at the top of the hat where it's gonna fall a little bit beyond the cuff of his hat, that furry cuff part, all right? Now we've got to think about the two hands that he has here. He's got two arms coming down where his hands are kind of like back behind his back. So the body is on top of the arm that's kind of going behind his back. So we need to take and pat, pat, pat some shading color on the arm this time. You're keeping your brush on the arm and you're keeping the burgundy color up right next to the body. And this is gonna separate that arm from his body. How are we doing, John, any questions? Um, yeah, I think everyone's, keeping up to some degree or another, not a lot of okay. questions, but everyone is thinking that your shading method is very helpful. So that's a good thing. Oh, that's a good thing for sure. Thank you so yeah. much, everyone. Yes. And by the way, when you are done with your painting, we here at Plaid love for you to share your work and share it in our Facebook group, Let's Paint with Plaid. Please do take a picture and post it and use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge. All of us here at Plaid love to give you kudos and help you along on your learn to paint journey. And whether you're an established artist or a newly found beginner, we just love it. To, and we love seeing all of your work. And we're here to give you some kudos and keep you going. I'm just kind of playing with mine at this point, adding a little bit of darkening, a darkener, darkening, sorry, <laughs> shadows here and there. If you're happy with yours on your first pass, then stop. And what we're gonna do is we are going to then add a little bit of a highlight here and there. And I think I'm good with mine right now. So I'm gonna stop. And as I say that, there's one more thing I saw. <laughs> and I'm going to wipe that dark burgundy color out of my brush. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to 
Sometimes with reds, you can shade with oranges, you can shade with a little bit of yellow, which will make it orange. But tonight we're just gonna do, um, with the palette that we have, we're gonna use some of our wicker white to shade. And when you look at my sample right here, you can see it's almost kind of like a little pink that I've used to do my highlighting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix a little bit of pink on our brush and keep apple red in as well. And we are going to shade on the bottom area, very, very bottom hemline, if you will, of his robe and up the side, we're gonna shade, or I should say highlight. We're gonna highlight that long cap of his hat, highlight a little bit across the top. We're gonna highlight here on the sides near his belly. And that will kind of help separate those shadow areas that we just created. So let's go ahead and start with that. So I'm gonna load that. I, remember I've wiped that burgundy out of my brush. I'm gonna load the apple red, stroking into that puddle, flip my brush over and I'm loading it again. So I've got apple red on both sides of that flat brush. And now I'm gonna use just a little bit of quicker white on the edge of that flat brush. And I'm going to create a light pink here with the red and white is gonna make a pink, right? Well, we're gonna make a light pink here keeping apple red on one side of the brush straight and that light pink on the other side. And now what I'm going to do is let's just do like we like I showed you here. We're gonna start here and just add that pink there and add the pink along the bottom here, giving our hemline and the side of his body here a little bit of highlight. And you can stroke towards you or if it's easier to stroke upwards, just keep the pink side of the brush on the outside edge of his hemline and the side of his jacket here or his robe. And again, it's just a pat, 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 pat mixture, a way of applying that color on here. If you need to stop and reload your brush with that, again, that's the apple red and the wicker white. And I'm patting that color on just to kind of give us that highlight edge of our Santa. So again, we're putting the wicker white on the hemline. And as you're looking at Santa, that's the right side of his coat. And just continue along, kind of patting that color on. When you get to the left side, we are going to give that a little bit of a highlight uh, kind of like if you think like a little corner here, we're not going to go up too far because we've shaded that beautifully underneath his uh, stocking cap. And that's all we're going to do is just kind of highlight. I'm going to add a little bit more in this corner here. Pat that color on. Don't worry about being very, very precise. I paint many, many Santas through the course of a year, and I love to experiment with different values, different shades, different colors, different techniques. And this is something fun that you should do too, just experiment. You could do this same pattern again and change the colors up. Maybe you want a blue Santa. Maybe you want a red Santa that's highlighted or shaded with oranges and yellows versus the pink. Just have fun with your art. So Chris, um, if you were to, I noticed you, you had said you didn't base coat the, um, the canvas, but would you recommend that you do actually do that? If so, why would you base coat a canvas? I would, if I were doing this at home, and we are gonna do a little bit to our canvas before I'm done here, but I would, if I were home, uh, take that time. In today's class, when we only have an hour to be together, it's hard to get that much done, plus transferring a pattern and so on. So yeah. I didn't for tonight, but I think if I were to paint this again at home at my kitchen table or my studio table, I would take the time to properly prepare my canvas. And that would be by base coating it, whatever color I wanted. In this case, I would do probably just a nice white because sure. um, I don't know if you can see, I'll bring my sample back up. We're gonna shade around Santa. Uh, maybe maybe it's too bright, let's see. I'm trying to see where's a good, there you just go. slightly with some gray. We're gonna go around the canvas, around the Santa, and we're gonna shade just 
real quick with a little bit of gray. And this highlighting is um, almost done because I'm working up the side of his hat now. The hat is before our Santa, so we need to give that a little bit of a highlight. And we're gonna highlight across the top too. All right. Now I'm gonna stop and we're gonna go ahead now and be able to work on his face. So I'm gonna pick up a liner brush and I'm going, I like a number one liner, but you can also use, um, gosh, a number two script liner, whichever is your most comfortable tool. And we're going to load it with a little bit of our black mixture. I did dip my brush into water first to thin it and I'm pulling some paint out with that excess water to make it more like a runny uh, mixture of that black. And my black again is licorice. We're gonna paint these eyes first and kind of think about the eyes as like a little, um, let's see, let me do it this way. Like a little triangle, if you will. One's gonna be that way and the second eye is gonna be that way. So what we're going to do is we're not gonna paint a triangle, but I want you to think about the shape as a triangle. So we're gonna start with this um, part that would be closest to the bridge of his nose and that's gonna be like a long line. Then the next one is gonna be a short line next to it. And it gets a little bit shorter as you go out. And that's basically all we're gonna do for a very simple little folk art eye. I'm gonna bring mine up close to the, can you see they're just almost like little triangles. Very, very simple. You could also just do a dot eye if you wanted to. I'm gonna pull this out so you can see a little bit closer. And they're just simply little lines creating that black, area of the eye. And that's all there is to this little, very whimsy, very folk arty eye. We have some eyebrows that are painted in above the eyes. And I'm gonna just dip my liner brush tip into that gray mixture. And I'm just gonna like diddy daddy dot that on. We're gonna let that dry. We'll come back and add some white to it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my liner brush still, dip it with a little bit of moisture, thin out a little bit of the wicker white, and we're gonna add his beard. And the beard is just simply starting in the center of his mouth. If you think about here's the mouth and come down to the center of his body. And I like to do the one long stroke here first in the center. So I like to pull sideways when I paint rather than pull towards me. So I'm gonna start here on that uh, burgundy color and do one long smooth stroke. And then you just continue adding fur hair using these long smooth strokes, a little pressure in the beginning and then just light and let that brush just kind of glide up to the mustache. I've added a couple more here. This is all the simpleness of his beard is going to be. And just kind of fill in as much of a beard as you want. I suggest allowing some of that gray color to show through because to me that adds interest. And it also gives you a little bit of shading to that beard. So just keep reloading your liner brush as you see the need to. And as you are stroking out from that center stroke, you want to start curving your strokes in towards that mustache. They're not all straight up and down. So start curving in towards the mustache and let some of those tails come up here to the section that touches his face. And keep going until you've got all the little beard painted. And don't forget this side too that kind of touches his face. And it's okay to let some of those strokes go up onto his cheeks. Can you all see that? While we have the white in our liner brush, we're gonna go ahead and stroke on his mustache. And the mustache is just solid white. I did not undercoat it with any gray. I always like to have a nice bright mustache but I like to have the gray underneath his beard. 
And sometimes I like to use a little bit more paint on the mustache so it's kind of more brush strokey. And there's a little bit more dimension. I don't know if that shows up. There you go. Now you can see a little more dimension there. I'm thinking that's how my beard would look if I grew it out. It's about as white as it is. You could I'm be our there. Santa. You could be our Santa, John. Yeah. While we still have the wicker white in our liner brush, we need to give him some highlights in his eyes and also then touch up his eyebrows. And again, you feel I'm holding mine up. The eyebrows, we just kind of dabbed that gray color on. So we're gonna dab white on top of the gray. And then when you look at his eye, let me see how I can get there. There, when you look at his eye, there's actually two highlights in each eye. And I like to put, them at, if you think of a face of a clock, at one o'clock and seven o'clock, like diagonally across from each other. So I'm going to put just simply a little touch and lift at one o'clock and diagonally down from that, like at seven o'clock, I'm going to put just a tiny little dot. So it's a touch lift on the big one and a tiny little dot on the little one. So the highlights are two in each eye, the upper one at one o'clock is a little bit larger in size than the one that's on the bottom. And again, don't forget our eyebrows. The eyebrows are just a little bit of white, allowing some of that gray to kind of show through. Santa's got some bushy eyebrows. They're just kind of dabbing color on. Chris, could you show maybe on, uh, I don't know if on us on the side or somewhere, um, just one more time how to do those beard strokes, you know, where it's have, where yes. it's more pressure at the beginning and then lighter? Yes, most definitely. I'm up. rinsing my brush and I'm going to do it with black now. Remember, I used white against the gray, but for it to show up on my palette here, I'm going to use black. So I've thinned down a little bit of my licorice. I'm still using my liner brush. And by thinning it down, I mean, I've dipped a little bit of water in the brush, took that water over here to thin that paint just a little bit. And maybe it's better if I do it on the back of a piece of paper here. Okay, so here's my white paper here. So if let's pretend Santa's beard is this shape right here, okay? We're gonna start in, and this is the mouth area. We're gonna start down here in the center and I'm gonna stroke up towards the mouth. So I like to hold my work sideways and I'm going to, with that loaded brush, and again, I've got white in my brush, even though I'm illustrating with the black, I'm gonna to touch and just let that drag up. So when I touch, there's a little bit more pressure when I drag up, I start releasing pressure. So it gets to be a skinnier line. So when I add the stroke next to it or the hair strand next to it, I'm gonna to touch and then stroke up. Can you see that? Yeah. Does that so it's help? All about the, it's all about the pressure. And yes, then... pressure at first and then light as you come up. So now right. when you see that on my one I just did, the demonstration one, it is, a bigger stroke here at the tip of the hair. And then it goes up lighter, skinnier strokes as it goes towards his mouth area. And that kind of allows more of your base color, that medium gray that we mix to show through. So now it kind of gives him more of a shaded beard. And while I have this black in my brush, I'm going to build the little opening in his mouth. And when you look at Santa, there's just a tiny little triangle, if you will. Can you see that little triangle where the mustache splits? That's where his mouth opening is. And we're just gonna paint a tiny, tiny little triangle where the two whiskers meet. And that gives him his opening. So now we're kind of like looking inside his mouth. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mix a little bit of red with a little bit of white to kind of make that pinky color. Now again, the red is apple red, the white is wicker white, and we're just gonna make a lip line from mustache to mustache. I'm just giving them a little bit of a lip right up next to that uh, black that we just put as the mouth opening. 
I sometimes like to highlight that area too by just picking up a little bit of either the flesh color. Sometimes I even pick up a little bit more of the white, make a lighter pink. And I like to put just a tiny little stroke across that lip. Here's this one. And here you can see it on the finished one. Oops, let me see. There, you can see it on the finished ones. Just kind of highlights the lip a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna to switch to a small flat brush and probably the same brush I've been using, a number eight. And I'm going to use a little bit of the white and the corner of the brush. And I'm just gonna tip that brush corner up and dab. Dabbing white on the cuff of his hat, kind of keeping it wispy and um, furry like. So just go ahead and add a little bit of white just like we did the beard, we do want some of that gray showing through. So it's just a matter of dabbing and twisting that brush around up and down to kind of give you a little bit of a furry look. And then come back and load a little bit more white and add a little bit more white here and there. We don't want it solid white. Remember, we want some of that gray showing through. All right. Next, we're gonna add the black belt and that is with licorice. So I'm using a flat brush. Let me do it this way for you. I'm using a flat brush loaded with our black. Use the chisel edge if you need to, to kind of just float that color on. And we're just base coating in the black area of his belt. Remember he's got a kind of swooping down a little bit towards the middle. Santa's enjoyed many cookies, probably from last year. He hasn't had a chance to enjoy the cookie shawl or bacon this year. And then don't forget, there's a little bit of the black belt showing through the middle of the buckle too. So in that middle of that square of his buckle, we need to add a little bit of black there. Just quickly put that black in. There's not any shading that's gonna go on here. We're just gonna let that be black. If you wanted to, you could even add a little bit of highlight using some white or even your medium gray and you could highlight the top half of the belt with that medium gray. While we have the black in our brush, we're gonna go ahead and start working on his shoes or his boots down here. And I'm going to allow some of this gray show through. We're just going to come along. And can you see, I just started adding the black along the outside edge there. So that is my number eight flat brush. And I just tipped a corner of it into the black and I'm patting that color on along the bottom of the shoe as well as uh, along that outside edges. One shoe is slightly darker than the other shoe where they meet in the middle. And I may, I choose to make my left boot darker. So on that center line between my two boots, I'm going to add the licorice or the black coming up right to separate the two shoes. So I'm just, again, patting that color on and patting it up underneath where it meets the belt too. I'm sorry, where it meets the hemline. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other half. We're patting that color on up his leg, underneath the hemline of his robe and along the bottom of the shoe. But we are not gonna worry on our right boot as you're looking at it. We're not gonna to worry too much about going down the center line between the two. So we're gonna let one boot be slightly darker than the other. All right. Now, before we get on to the gold, I just wanna tell you about our trim because I know our class is coming to closely to the end. I just wanna make sure we go on to all of the things that we need to do. So I'm gonna add a little bit more apple red out onto my palette. And with our apple red, when you look at my sample here, he's got a real fun little trim at the top and the bottom. And I'll just teach it once because you're gonna repeat what you do at the top down here, what you're gonna do at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do with my flat brush, I'll make sure it's clean. I had some black in it a minute ago. 
I'm going to load that brush good and full with the red. And again, that's apple red. I'm stroking into the puddle, flipping the brush over. I'm loading both sides of that flat brush with my apple red. And every other stripe here is painted red. One stripe in between is left with the natural uh, white of the canvas. So as you look here, you could take your fully loaded brush and where you see your pattern lines, use the chisel edge to mark that off. And then use the chisel edge to mark off this part and then paint that little section in. So if you're kind of making a line work or a striped, uh, striped checkerboard, if you will. Now, when you come to the edges, if you're going to frame your piece, you don't necessarily have to cover the edges and on and both the sides and the top. You don't really necessarily have to cover all that if you're gonna frame it. If you're not gonna frame it, then you might wanna carry that stripe over onto the edge of the canvas, okay? So every other stripe here is going to be our red. Again, using the chisel edge of your flat brush, go right up along that one first horizontal border and just create the stripes and paint those in and allow them to dry. Remember, we're not painting the white. We're allowing that to be the canvas color. And we're gonna just continue across painting all of these little stripes with our red. And again, that is apple red and I'm using a number eight flat brush. Just as neatly and carefully as you can. You could even switch and use a larger brush, uh, perhaps a 10 or even a 12 brush. And maybe you do it just the width of your brush stripe. If you've lost your pattern or you don't have a pattern, just create that ridge there using the stripes of red. And then what we're going to do is I do want this to dry a little bit. So I'm gonna use my hairdryer real quick. And I'm gonna also add two more colors out onto my palette. And one color is a beautiful bright yellow green color. And this one is citrus green. And then I'm also gonna add bright green out onto my palette. So I've added citrus green and bright green. And bright green is a great Christmassy color, Christmassy green color, I should say. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a uh, flat brush and I've moved up to a size 12 flat brush. I dipped it into water. I'm gonna blot on a paper towel and then I'm going to uh, either side load or dip into that bright yellow green color. And again, that's citrus green. I do want to float color this time. So I want my brush to be a little bit more fluid or more liquid with more water. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna work on this horizontal band here. And I'm just gonna float that yellowy green color on the top and the bottom of that band before we do the little stroke work of, that might represent hollies and berries. So I'm just gonna take that brush with the green, the yellow green color towards that out, um, pattern line. And I'm just gonna float that color all the way across and you can pat, pat, pat that on or you can do one long smooth stroke. And so again, if you're working to where you think you might frame your piece, don't worry about covering over to the edges. If you're not going to frame it, then of course you'll want to drop that color down on the sides of this project. Okay, so I did the bottom half. Oops, let me flip it this way for you. I did the bottom half. Now I'm gonna come across and do the top half. Again, this is the citrus green. I'm using a number 12 flat brush using a little bit of moisture in my brush of the water. And this is one reason why I wanted to make sure that my red was dry because you don't wanna bleed that red into this band. So that's why I used my hair dryer just a second ago. All right, now we're gonna let that dry. So while that's drying, I wanna go back to these stripes. And on our red stripe, I'll show you real quick. We're going to shade the 
part where it meets the horizontal band. So we're gonna shade across the bottom here. And what color do you think we might use? Yep, you're right. We're gonna use our burgundy that we mixed. So I loaded my flat brush with apple red and I'm stroking into that pile of that burgundy color that we made. And I'm just going to, again, holding the brush to where it's close to that horizontal band. Let me move up for close captioning here. And I'm going to pat, 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 pat. And I'm moving that brush up a little bit so that we're going a little bit further, deeper into the stripe. I'm patting that color on. Again, that's our burgundy that we mixed where we used apple red and a little bit of our black. Can you all see the, how that deepened that shadow of the stripe. And I'm going to do the same thing on the last one here. Everything we're doing up at the top, you're gonna to reverse and do down here at the bottom. While we have that gray mixture made, I'm going to load my brush in the same way with our gray mixture on that same flat brush with a little bit of water in the brush, kind of making it fluid. And we are going to shade on the white, let me move it this way, on the white of our stripes and patting that up into the white with that gray. Again, that's just given us a little bit more depth on these stripes. This gray floating that I have in my brush now is also what we're going to do to shade around our Santa just patting that color on and I shaded around the whole Santa figure. Again, that's the medium gray and a little bit of moisture in my brush. And I am just kind of patting that color on everywhere that there's a little bit of that white background. So that is our medium gray that we made with our licorice. And I'm pat, pat, patting that color on to give a little depth to our background because we didn't actually have time to paint that. Okay. And I'm almost done with that. And we'll come around here, come around his mustache, around the side of his face and around his hat and back up to where we started. And that just gave us a little bit, I'm going to go across this green right here, gave us a little bit of color to our background. All right, now let's go move real quickly to the little like holly-like strokes that we have here on his uh, horizontal bands. And if you're looking at it, you can see there's a red dot that's kind of like a little berry. And then there's a darker green, that's our bright green uh, little stroke, and then a lighter green, which is our citrus green. So if you go ahead and just kind of give yourself a little circle as to where the little red berry is going to be, you can stroke towards that little red circle. And I can still see my circles on my board. I did not transfer the whole leaf shape. I'm gonna use my liner brush. I'm not thinning the paint this time. I want it just the same consistency as it comes out of the bottle, a little bit thicker. And I'm going to load with the darker green first, and that's our bright green. And I'm just going to touch, pull. It's not really a full stroke per se. I'm just going to, let's see, where's my next circle? Here, touch, pull. Touch. Pull. I'm stroking towards where my little circles are. Now the circles being the berries. Touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. I'm gonna wipe that green out of my brush. Don't worry about cleaning between. I'm gonna load with the lighter yellow green and I'm gonna do the top little leaf. Kind of like little imitation holly leaves or something that kind of some kind of evergreen. Touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. It's almost like I'm just touching, applying pressure, mashing it down a little bit and then pulling. And as I'm pulling, I'm lifting. So it kind of creates like a little bit of a leaf trim. Again, if you're not, if you're not gonna frame yours, carry this border down onto the sides like I did here on the bottom. Our little berry is nothing but the um, red that we've been working with all night long, the apple red. And you can use, 
either the liner brush or you can use the handle end of the liner brush. And we're just going to kind of like at the, if you think of this as a V, we're coming down into a V right where the V is, touch and just draw a little circle. Touch and draw a little circle. And you add your little berries. Everywhere where the two leaves meet, like in a V shape. And that's all there is to that. I did go back on mine as an optional part. I did add just a tiny little bit. I don't know if it's gonna show if I can get it to glisten. You can see a little bit of a treasure gold dot. And I did add a little bit of the treasure gold dot on my red once the red was dry. Let's go ahead and get the treasure gold out. Let's work on the little stripes on the bottom of his stocking cap here and his belt. Treasure gold, if you're not familiar with it, is a fantastic product. I'm gonna put a little bit out on my palette here. It is the most highly pigmented acrylic metallic paint on the market. It's fantastic. It comes in a variety of colors. And the color that I put on your supply list was gold. How appropriate for our little jingle bell. And I'm going to use my liner brush. Not going to worry about thinning this paint down. And I am just going to paint the little jingle bell. Solid color, treasure gold. And I think one coat is going to cover it. Just make a nice gold jingle bell. And then also add the jingle bell color, <laughs> the treasure gold color to our buckle. And the buckle is just simply a square around that little space that you left there. Almost like a little frame, if you will. You're painting a little frame around his belt. And I also did the little metal part here of the buckle, like a little line in between. And so that's all you're gonna add there. And for the bands on his hat, you can make as many bands as wide or as thin as you want just to kind of give a little interest to his hat. And maybe add a couple down here. The last thing I did for our Santa was to buckle up his boots and you can use the handle end of your paintbrush. And I added, let me move up so you can see closer. I added three little dots using the handle end of my paintbrush on the outside edge, not the inner, part of his boot on the outer part of his boot on both of his shoes, giving him some little fasteners on his boots. And then I also added some black buttons down his front. Again, using the handle end of the paintbrush, touch and kind of draw a little circle. And you can give as many buttons as you want or as many that might fit between starting at his belt buckle and working up. And the very, very last thing I did was I outlined all of mine just to kind of give it a little bit more character. Use your liner brush, some thinned black paint and thinning, I'm using water to thin it, pulling some out and really getting that nice and nice thin. And I outlined everything. So when you look at mine, the stripes were outlined, the horizontal border was outlined, Everything around Santa, the outside of his clothing, separating his arm from his um, top of his, his main body. I went on top and bottom of the belt and or separating the hat from his body. I outlined the stripes here that we just added. And in the jingle bell, I also added the little line with the two little dots at the bottom. So outlining it in black just kind of gives you a little bit more touch of whimsy and adds just another little detail to your painting. And when I outline, like I said, I've thinned down my black. I use my brush straight up and down rather than like a pencil or a pen. I find you will do much better with your line work if you hold that brush straight up so that your brush handle is facing the ceiling. And I use light wispy little strokes, especially around the curve of his fur here. And can you see how that added so much more character to the fur of this hat? So that's what you're gonna do as your last finishing touch is to, and be careful of any of the dot work that you just did, because you don't want to get your hands into that. You can do 
long, smooth lines, or if you want, if it's easier, do like a jaggedy, wispy line. So this is a jaggedy, wispy line example. And here's an example of where I use the long, smooth line. But the outlining in black is your very last step. And then most of all, importantly, do sign your name. I signed mine very small here at the bottom. I always like to sign my work very neatly and discreetly. And I think that's about all there um, is to this. Oops, sorry, John. Yeah, so somebody did ask if you could outline with a marker, maybe if they're not, uh, if you're not real confident with the liner brush, I don't know, but yes. I suppose a fine yes. tip marker Most could work. Yes, most importantly, and if you are outlining with a marker, I highly recommend that if you plan to put a varnish on yours or a spray finish on yours, or even if you're brushing on a varnish, make sure that it is not water soluble. Make sure that it's permanent because you don't want that marker work to bleed once you put a sealer on it. Mm. Let me tell you, once again, I painted mine with the Folk Art Multi-Surface paints, which have a sealer built into them and they dry to a gorgeous satin finish. So there's no need to really seal yours. Um, the sheen that you see on my finished one, if you can see a sheen at all, this is the satin finish of the paints. There is no um, brush on or spray finish on mine. But if you want to make sure, if you are doing that and you want to make sure that your marker will not bleed, test it first. That's the only thing I would caution you is to please test it first. Got it. So, so we just um, have um, two quick things, I guess, Chris, before okay. we go. One would be, let's cover again one more time. So a lot of people were asking. So the, the, the Mrs. Claus class yes. is going to be on Facebook in the are we left overhead or are we or, or right I see now. Straight, uh, face on, straight straight on. Better. there you go okay okay the so Mrs. Here's Claus the Santa... class is is going to be on Facebook in the let's paint with plaid group and it's on Thursday at yes. what time Chris noon eastern standard time so the Santa class uh rerun if you will will be saved to the Michaels uh YouTube channel so you'll be able to watch Santa again on uh, Michael's YouTube channel. If you didn't paint with me tonight, you want to paint again, check out Michael's YouTube channel within 24 hours. I think it's usually posted within 24 hours. If you want to paint his pair uh, to add some woman power to your uh, Christmas paintings here, we always want to share a little love for Mrs. Claus. And so Mrs. Claus is what I'm going to teach this Thursday in the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group at noon Eastern Standard Time. And I hope you all join me because what's Santa without Mrs., right? Now, if they need the pattern, where do they, or the template, is that in the group already? Is that posted? It's not posted yet. I will be posting it tomorrow. There you go. Yeah, Cause... so you, the pattern for Santa was shared with you, I believe in the chats tonight. Yes. And then it was on Michael's website when you registered for the class. If you missed yep. it, I think the link was shared a couple times in the chat by Lindsay. Um, so that's where you can find the pattern for Santa. Uh, the pattern for Mrs. Claus will be in the files section of our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. Awesome. And one more thing I wanna share, if you are joining us next Monday night for the Plaid sponsored uh, paint night live uh andy jones is going to be here next monday night and he is going to share with you a very fun holiday design and that's going to be a fun little ornament so that would be december the 6th and it will start at 8 p.m eastern standard time so i hope that you join us again uh next monday night when andy will be here as your lead teacher i hope all of you enjoyed the class tonight before we started i asked how many people had registered for the class and i was told over 12 hundred people. So I hope to see lots and lots of Santa Clauses um, painted and do always take a picture and share your work in our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. Use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge and also uh, hashtag Michael's classes or make it with Michael's. So That's right. until next time, unless there's any other questions, John, are nope. there? I think we're good. Okay, well, thank you all for attending tonight. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Thanks, guys.